Pregnancy is an exciting time. Whether you are expecting your first child, or even if you already have a child, considering what it will be like to start a family or add a new member to your family makes it a time that is filled with possibilities for the future. But with these possibilities, there is also the concern that something may go wrong or you may not be prepared to handle your child's needs. These uncertainties are common for any pregnancy and often cause some anxiety. Among these uncertainties, many parents-to-be worry that something will affect their child's health or development. The recent spread of Zika virus to the United States can be a particular concern for pregnant women and their partners, as well as their extended family and friends. This video aims to provide you some basic information about the risks of Zika infection during pregnancy and to recommend some things you may be able to do to address the concerns you have if you are worried or if you already know that you or your unborn child are infected. Let's start by summarizing what we know about Zika virus infection in pregnant women and what problems it can cause for children who are infected before they are born. This information is accurate based on what is known as of March 2017, but for up-to-date information that you can trust to be accurate, visit the CDC website, cdc.gov forward slash Zika, and check with your healthcare team. The Zika virus is spread by a particular type of mosquito. If one of these mosquitoes bites someone who is infected with the Zika virus and then bites someone else, the Zika virus that was in the blood of the first person can spread to the second person. Women who are pregnant or considering becoming pregnant in the next several months should consider avoiding areas where the spread of the Zika virus is known to be a risk whenever that is possible. For those living in these areas, they should consider waiting to become pregnant until Zika virus infection has either been controlled in their community or an effective vaccine has been developed. If you are already pregnant and living in these areas or need to travel to these areas, you should take steps to try to minimize the chance you will be bitten by mosquitoes. These steps include regularly applying bug repellent that is safe for use during pregnancy, covering arms and legs with clothing when outdoors, and staying indoors as much as possible. But even if people take these steps to avoid being bitten by a mosquito, mosquito bites cannot be prevented completely. This can make people feel anxious that they will be bitten, worried that they already may have been bitten by a mosquito and become infected with Zika virus, and guilty if they fail to follow all the steps to avoid infection or chose to visit or live in areas where the Zika virus is being spread. The Zika virus can also be transmitted through close sexual contact. The Zika virus can live in the semen for several months or longer after a man becomes infected. For this reason, it is important for men who may be infected, including those who traveled recently to areas where Zika virus is being spread, even if they don't have any symptoms, to use condoms for at least six months when having sex and to wait to conceive a child until after this time has passed. They should also use condoms when having sex, whether it be vaginal, anal, or oral sex with a pregnant woman for the duration of the pregnancy or not have sex throughout the remainder of the pregnancy. Even though some of the symptoms of infection with Zika in adults and children are similar to some of the symptoms of the common cold, the virus is not spread the same way. In particular, it is not found in high concentrations in saliva and can't be spread by coughing, sneezing, kissing, or sharing a glass or utensil. People who are infected or worried that they may be infected with Zika virus don't have to avoid being near others, even pregnant women. Most adults and children who become infected with the Zika virus will show no symptoms or may have symptoms such as fever, a bumpy rash that might be itchy, joint pains, and red eyes. While there is no medication to treat Zika virus infections as of March 2017, almost all people will recover without any treatment. The main concern is when Zika infection occurs in a pregnant woman who passes the virus to the fetus. Different viruses tend to infect different parts of the body. We know that the Zika virus tends to infect cells in the nervous system. The brain of a fetus is growing quickly and can be particularly harmed by the Zika virus. Unfortunately, 
we don't have yet a vaccine that can prevent illness from Zika infection. The Zika virus can infect cells in the brain and significantly slow the growth and development of the brain. When this happens during a time when the brain is growing quickly, such as early in the pregnancy, the slowed growth of the brain leads to a slowing of the growth of the skull and therefore head size. Normally, the skull increases in size because the enlarging brain pushes on the inside of the skull and causes it to increase in size. So when the growth of the brain slows down, so does the rate of growth of the head. Some of these babies are therefore born with abnormally small heads, what we call microcephaly. And when this is due to significantly slowed growth of the brain, these infants often end up with serious lifelong developmental delays resulting in intellectual disability, neurologic problems such as seizures, or problems with vision and hearing. While this doesn't happen in most fetuses who are infected with the Zika virus, it can if the infection occurs during pregnancy. The risk is highest when the infection happens earlier in the pregnancy. Some fetuses that are infected with the Zika virus may be born with normal head sizes, but will not have normal growth in their brain during the first year of life. Many, but not all, of these infants will show some abnormalities on imaging studies, such as MRI or ultrasound of their brains when they are first born, but before they show a slowed growth of their skull. Because Zika virus infection of fetuses has only recently been shown to be a problem, we don't know yet if there are other problems in development or learning that are less obvious and that may first be seen in children after infancy, such as when they enter school. Unfortunately, we can't tell parents of infants who were infected before they were born that there won't be any problems in the child's growth and development, even if all of the studies appear normal and the child's head size grows normally. This can make any parent anxious and cause them to continuously look for problems, a developmental milestone that seems a bit delayed, or a pattern of development that looks a bit different than what might be expected will take on a very different meaning if you are very worried about your child's development. Partnering with a pediatrician or other doctor that you can trust to help you sort out what is worrisome, what is normal development, or possibly just unclear at one point in time may be quite helpful. Your doctor may also suggest closer monitoring of your child's development by other specialists that can help you follow this more closely and teach you techniques that can help you promote your child's healthy development. Finding out that your unborn child may be infected with the Zika virus can cause a range of strong feelings. You may be afraid, anxious, and worried, and find it hard to concentrate and make decisions. You may be so preoccupied with thoughts about the pregnancy and your unborn child and trying to decide what to do that you find it nearly impossible to focus on your work or studies. You may feel sad or depressed or feel a strong sense of loss. Pregnancy is often portrayed as a time of great joy and excitement rather than a time of anxiety and stress. You may feel angry or disappointed that you no longer have such a pregnancy or no longer feel confident that your child will have a bright and limitless future. The stress may interfere with your sleep, impact your appetite, or leave you feeling tired or drained. You may experience headaches or stomach aches or other physical complaints. You may find that you are short-tempered or less flexible. You may see these type of reactions in your partner or other close family members who are also worried. This may result in disagreements and conflicts with those you love at a time when you feel you most need their understanding and support. When a Zika virus infection is suspected or known during a pregnancy, you may be asked to make some difficult decisions quickly, at a time when you are under stress and having trouble concentrating and making even basic decisions, and when the information that is available is limited or inconsistent. There may be strong differences of opinion. You may not agree with your partner, family members, or friends about what is best for you and your family. There is a lot that may worry you, and you should be sure to share your concerns with your healthcare team. Yes, all expecting parents, on some level, will be worried at times. But believing or knowing that your unborn child may be infected with Zika virus gives you an additional concern that most parents-to-be haven't had to deal with. While even psychologically healthy individuals who are faced with the same concerns may have similar worries, 
that doesn't mean you should avoid sharing those concerns with the healthcare team. They may be able to answer some of your questions. They may also introduce you to some individuals that can help you manage some of your worries and anxiety. Just because anyone in your position may be worried doesn't mean that you should expect to deal with your worries by yourself. Allow yourself to share your concerns and accept some assistance if you think this will help you and your family. You can also try techniques you've used in the past to deal with stress and learn and practice new techniques. Some common approaches might include talking with someone you trust, such as your partner, family members, friends, or faith-based professionals, participating in a support group, or communicating through social media or email with other pregnant women or parents with similar concerns, or those who have successfully dealt with a similar experience. Writing about your feelings in a journal, even if no one reads what you wrote. Or expressing your feelings through art or other creative activities. Stress relaxation techniques such as yoga, meditation, and self-hypnosis can help you better manage distress. Other healthy strategies that provide you some distraction, such as exercise, may be helpful. But be sure to avoid unhealthy means of distraction, such as alcohol, tobacco, or other drugs. These are never good ways to avoid distress, and they can, by themselves, be very harmful to a fetus, so they are particularly a problem for pregnant women. You should seek and accept help from professionals who can teach you new approaches to deal with your distress. Counseling for distress may take the form of supportive counseling or involve teaching you ways to manage the way you think about stressful situations. Our thoughts affect our feelings and behaviors, and therefore how we adjust to potentially stressful situations. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, can help people replace negative thoughts with more positive interpretations that result in improvements in feelings and behaviors. Counseling may be particularly helpful for individuals who have other worries, such as financial concerns or other health problems, stresses, or pre-existing mental health problems such as depression, who are likely to find it more difficult to cope with the concerns related to Zika infection. People who have had other stresses or losses in their life in the past, even if they are completely unrelated to the situation that is causing stress now, may also find that they're having more trouble coping. On the other hand, those with many types of effective coping skills and social supports may be better able to handle the associated stress. As you turn to your partner, family members, or friends for assistance, it is important to recognize that different people may have very different ways they understand and react to potentially worrisome information and how they try to cope with distress. In stressful situations, differences in personality and ways of coping become magnified, and these differences can cause conflict between two people, even if they love each other a great deal. Some people find it very difficult to openly discuss their feelings, and some can't seem to stop talking about them. Some people prefer to be physically close with others when they are upset, while others prefer to be alone. One partner may use physical activities such as running to work through distress, but the other partner who is seeking companionship and open discussion may question why their partner is running away from them. Some people cope with the stressful situation by trying to learn everything they can about it. The somewhat limited and rapidly changing information about Zika virus, as well as the conflicting and often frankly incorrect information that can be found on the internet, can be frustrating for people who want to understand as much as possible. But some people find additional information overwhelming and prefer to trust their physician, partner, or someone else that they respect to help them make even very important decisions. Figure out what works best for you and your partner or another family member or a friend that may be serving as your support and work out a solution that works best for both of you. Talking openly helps convey each person's personal preferences. Learn to respect and tolerate the differences of your partner. Work together to make sure that both of you have ways to effectively meet your needs and realize that no matter how much you love someone else, you may not be in the best position at any particular time to meet all the needs of the other person. Allow yourself to include friends, family, and professionals to make sure you get the best support to address all of your concerns and those of your partner or support person.